Hey guys, welcome once again. Our very special guest today, Gino Medina. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me over here. You know, all the way from the UK. Yeah, hell yeah, man. <laughs> all the hell way yeah. from the lovely sunny UK. Uh, and we've had <laughs> one day of sun this summer, so I think that's somewhere done for us now. Usually we get one nice day, then that's it. For the rest of the year, it's miserable. So I'm oh, guessing man. where you are in Texas... It's pretty it's much hot. nice every day, right? It's always not. It's, no, yeah, it's always hot over here. You know, it's yeah, always yeah. very humid and very, very hot. You know, so you guys had a great over there. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, I love sunny weather, so I'd much rather be in Texas right now. You know, I'd much rather is, be yeah. where you are. The thing is, not even it's not even sunny most of the time. It's just like very humid. Humid. Yeah. 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 You know, that's where else in yeah. Texas are you? I'm in from Houston, Houston, oh, Texas. Houston. Right. Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, I was uh, I, I was raised down here in uh, in Houston, man. Trained by Booker T here in Houston as well. Awesome! That yeah. I was <laughs> going to ask. Like, uh, there's got to be a Booker T affiliation there, right? Every oh, wrestler of course. from Houston usually goes through Booker T. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but no, because we were going to mention that obviously before we mentioned Booker. Though, I mean, you're a second generation um, yes. wrestler. I mean, what was it like for yourself growing up? I guess you've grown up in the business. I mean, what was it like growing up in the wrestling uh, business? So, so it was pretty cool because since, uh, since I can remember, I was in those locker rooms in the back, you know, yeah. trying, trying to see all these luchadors with their, without their mask and whatnot, <laughs> trying to sneak up <laughs> behind them and trying to see them. Uh, but it's always <laughs> been fun. It was fun, you know, being able to like grow up on that and grow up and kind of like it made a very, a very big impact on my life to like see all that and to kind of, um, I, I don't know, just from early on, I kind of knew what I wanted to do, you know, just seeing all of that, you know, growing up. Uh, unfortunately, my dad passed away when I was like around six or seven. Yeah. So I didn't, so I didn't grow up around wrestling as much as you would think, because uh, you know uh, around that time I wasn't as strong wrestling uh, around wrestling as much. Uh, but you know, thankfully I was, you know, the bug was still always out, was yeah. always there, and I always knew what I wanted to do that. So like, I guess from my, it was a cool thing was that from an early age I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, as a wrestling fan, sure, Callum can say the same thing. I mean. I'd love to have grown up in the wrestling business. I mean, it's you know, as a wrestling fan, you, you just think of those stories of like who's who in the locker rooms and people <laughs> like you, you know, you've grown up. I mean, you've seen the picture of the rock being held by Andre the Giant and things yeah. like that. It's like, it must have been so cool, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, so you said obviously you got the bug when you was what a little kid, and that's just always been there then. Yeah, man. Like uh after my dad passed away after for a couple of years, I wasn't watching wrestling as much. I was just, you know, kind of just not ignoring that, but I guess like watching that would kind of remind me of my dad. Yeah. So yeah. I, I got away from it for, for a while. And then uh, I don't know, I just, I have somehow just found my way back into like watching WWE and whatnot. I remember watching Randy Orton and beat up the Undertaker and I was hooked again. I was like, okay, yeah, this is, it's so cool. And this is what I want to do. And uh, yeah, man, uh, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty cool having that, you know, that little like break from it and knowing that mm-hmm. I, that it came back to me, you know, the yeah. wrestling came back to me and that, that I can like get back into it. And I still wanted to do it as well. And uh, yeah, I kind of just saw it as a, uh, I just wanted to continue my dad's legacy in a way. And you are, man. And you are. Like I said, we're, we're big fans. I mean, what a Thank few you. to be drawn back into. I mean, Randy Orton, Undertaker. I mean, that was one hell of a few. <laughs> so if you're going to yeah. get brought back in. I mean, that is... Uh, <laughs> I've got to ask you a question as well. That feud yes. is completely on the, on the sway, going completely off off grid here now. Should Randy, <laughs> should Randy Orton have ended the streak? Uh, I would prefer that more than Brock Lesnar. Yes. Yes, I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I, personally, <laughs> I think it should have ended with CM Punk, but I'm a huge yes. CM Punk mark. All the same. Uh, but if not CM Punk, then Randy Orton definitely. <laughs> Yeah, man, Randy would have been cool. I mean, even Shawn Michaels, you know. Yeah, they could have yeah. both lost or something. I don't know. You see, but, you're uh, my favorite yeah. guest now. You, Shawn Michaels <laughs> ending the streak would have been <laughs> I was there for that one, though. I was, there, oh, really? I was there for that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. For the 425. Oh, the atmosphere was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, man. I think uh, that was like the other moment that I do. I just wanted to do it because I was there for that. I was like, oh my god, like, oh, <laughs> I mean, dude. seriously, yeah. What what was it like to be in the building for that match? Because I watched it at home and I had goosebumps. I've never yeah, seen a match like it. I mean, was it in person? I can imagine what that was like. 
same same year, man, I had goosebumps being there and like uh, it was just pretty cool seeing like a whole arena just being like, oh, like <laughs> you don't know the person <laughs> next to you, and you're like you're everybody's excited, everybody's like everybody feels like a big like family there because we're yeah. all like yeah, you know, we're all just kind of reacting to what's going on and whatnot. And like you can see you, you just kind of shake the, the person next to you, you're like, hey man, like what the hell? Like and everybody's yeah. just in there kind of interacting, kind of like you know, just it's just enjoying wrestling, you know. I feel like that's what it's all about. That's um, I've mentioned it before on the show. I've done a couple of manias before, and one of them was in uh, Dallas for Thirty Two, and that exact same feeling of um, when something big happens, you do kind of just look to the person next to you, and you think we're having this experience together. You know, like <laughs> yeah. you just want to like hug them or something. It's, you wouldn't do that at any other show apart from wrestling. For right? wrestling, that's what yeah, makes wrestling yeah. so cool yeah. is yeah, like man. every fan is almost like family at that point because, you know, you've all got that one thing in common and that's wrestling, your love for wrestling. And I've always thought that's so cool about, you know, this over any other sport. I think it yeah, only man. really happens in pro wrestling. Yeah, man. And I feel like in wrestling, we're all a bunch of weirdos. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. That's so it. it. I mean, cool. that's it, dude. I totally, totally agree. It's like, if, if you don't like wrestling, you said to someone, I'm a wrestling fan. You kind of think they're looking at you as in you're a weirdo. But like yes. when you're at a show and you're with other wrestling fans and the wrestlers are interacting with you, there isn't a more wonderful thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. man. It's, a, it's, like a, yeah. it's like a big family. So it kind of sucks when like the wrestling community bashes each other because I'm like, no, oh, stop yeah. it. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, just every, that. that's every day yeah. on Twitter, right? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, man. God. But obviously you said you found the love for wrestling again. You found Booker T. I mean, what, what was it like learning from Booker T? I mean, two-time Hall of Famer. That must have been an experience in, in itself. Yeah, I mean, it was great. Cause, um, so I originally, when I was 14, I started training uh, Lucha Libre down here in, uh, or down right. in Texas, right? And, uh, you know, at, at like age 16, like I went down to Booker's. I went down to Booker's with a mask and everything, you know, like I was, I had the whole get up. The first thing you said, he was like, "All right, we got, we got to take that mask off, kid." And I was like, "All right." <laughs> and, then, and next thing you know, I had to take my mask off and like, uh, had to start off from like square one, man. Had to just kind of like build myself up from that and kind of like build up a new persona, a new character. And then a lot of people know that's a college, you know, Lucha Libre, and from like you know, regular American wrestling or other like uh, you know, pro wrestling. It's like way different, so it was really hard yeah. to kind of like, yeah. you know, you know, transition into that. But uh, it was pretty cool, man, because Booker's always been very supportive of me. And even at age 16, like, I feel like he, like, saw something in me. And out of that, he just wanted to, like, help me out, you know. Uh, you know, he told me, like, yeah, kid, I got, I'm going to get you a look. You know, I'm, I'm going to take you up to 3D, get you some, you know, some, uh, some extra work, all this. And, like, you could tell, like, from a young age, he just wanted to help me out. And I was been very, I was appreciated that, that, like, he didn't have to do that. And he didn't, like... He didn't have to hold me out like that, but I feel like he saw something. Mm -hmm. He was like, all right, I got to help this kid out. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so yeah, when, I was, that, when you was with Booker T uh, training, how much did Booker T help bring out the character in you? Because I know you call yourself the untouchable. You know, that's <laughs> an, an awesome name to start with. And, <laughs> you, you know, you've got like this very flashy character. How much of that is a character? And was it just something that Booker T helped bring out of you? Oh yeah, definitely. Because I mean, he's a character. <laughs> he's a character himself. Like he's just very, he's he's on all the time. Everybody's like, How, "How's it training with Booker Team?" I'm just like, "I mean, what you, Bunny, what you, Bad Bunny wrote a song about him. You know, he must be doing something right." <laughs> yeah, man. Don't hype him up too much though, because he'll 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 hear this. He'll be like, "Yeah, Bad Bunny wrote, wrote a song about me." <laughs> he 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 always brings that up now. <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> it's funny. You but, know what I mean, was yeah. happening? I think you're the sorry. I think you're the first person to ever do a Booker T impression on this show as well. So it's spot on. As well. on. I love yeah, it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up wrong here, man. So like every time it was just Booker, just being Booker T around me. So that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, he was very instrumental in like finding myself, I guess, because like mm. like I say, he he always believed in me, and I feel like in wrestling, you have to believe in yourself. So like seeing that somebody like Booker T believed in me kind of like yeah. gave me like you know huge a confident boost knowing that he he saw me in a way that nobody else saw me and I was like okay like if he sees me like this I gotta kind of deliver you know so mm -hmm. that's what it was you know at a young age he 
like I said, when I started doing this whole Gino persona, he he gave me the the championship at his promotion, like the main championship at like yeah. 18, 19 for no reason. I was like, okay, Booker, believe in me. Like, so I gotta really step it up. Uh it was a lot of that, man. It was just a lot of him believing in me. That made me believe in myself. And then you get this untouchable character now. But uh a lot a lot of people don't know, but uh Bruce Pritchard was very instrumental on that as well. Because Bruce Pritchard was down here as well um, for a while before he went back to WWE. Yeah. And uh, he had the same thing. He literally talked to me and, like, kind of told me, like, hey, kid, like, you, you got something here. You got to, like, you got to find it. You got something going on here. Like, there's something here and you should find it. And just them to believing in me always made me believe in myself, I guess. And that's how the Fino Divino Intocable Gino came out. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's two pretty important people to have on your side as well i mean two big powerful people i mean going back to when yeah. you went though when you were 16 you said you obviously you came you had the mask and stuff was you reluctant at first to take the mask off obviously with your lucha libra background or are you now obviously now it's worked out but was you reluctant back then at first i was a little bit just because um i was a, a shy 16 year old kid so mm-hmm. i was like I feel like that was my comfort zone, being in the mask. I was like, okay, like I get to be a different person, you know, out, out there. But when I had to take it off, it was just me. It was just me out there, and I was kind of a little. And there's there's some matches out there where I barely take my mask off, and I'm very like, very very awkwardly in there, like you know, making weird faces and whatnot. Like I was just, gonna say, <laughs> is it, was that also a challenge? You know, when you're wrestling yes. in a mask, you're more reliant on your body language rather than your facials, obviously. When you took the mask off, did it take a while to adapt to selling with your facial expressions as well? Definitely, it, it was it was a little. Uh, I think I, I struggled with that a little bit actually. Yeah. Just kind of taking that mask off and being, like I said, being confident without it. Because, like I said, I was I was just lost out there without without a mask. I didn't know what was going on. I had this whole like little like get up, this whole like mask for advice and stuff. Oh. So you couldn't see you couldn't see my eyes at all. So from going from, from that to like no mask, it was just like a whole like it was way different. So I had to like adapt really quick out there. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say as well, though, that that t shirt you're wearing is amazing. Oh yeah, man. Have you yeah, guys checked out local wrestling? Man. You guys gotta I, you guys gotta check no, out local I'm, I'm wrestling. No, I'm going to local wrestling. I'm gonna even yeah, I'm man. Gonna go on it right that now. A... <laughs> it's <laughs> a while. It's a when you first came on the screen, I thought it was an Eddie Guerrero t-shirt. Obviously, yeah. the, the style. But I'm like, local wrestling. I'm going to be checking those out because I want that t-shirt you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, man. It's a, it's a wild show we, they, uh, they have here in Houston. Uh, it's, it's called Local Wrestling. We have a lot, a lot of good guys, man. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ninja Mac. Ninja Mac yeah. is just like, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he started down here. He actually uh, got found down here, uh, you know, with all the, all the bigger promotions. Him. There's this other guy called Dante Leon, he, uh, the yep. guy that does the, the shooting star cutter. He he oh, yeah. he was yeah he was filmed here as well at local wrestling. So like local wrestling is building a lot of you know upcoming talent. So like it's pretty cool yeah, uh, I've seeing it grow. At it now. Um, yeah, you know, there's Laredo Kid and yes, um, yeah, uh, Moonshine well, I mean, Mantel. He's fantastic. I love oh, Moonshine. I love Moonshine. Hernandez, yeah. Christy James, Hi M. Yeah, I'll have to check. We'll have to check them out. That seems <laughs> like a yeah. really good promotion. I mean, yeah, Texas man. itself, obviously, it's a great wrestling state anyway, but at the minute, well, obviously, the independence coming back, it's making a big name for itself again, isn't it? I mean, also, New Texas Pro, you've got Mission Pro. Um, what's your thoughts on the Texas scene at the minute? Oh, I love the Texas scene, man, because, like, like I I feel like I've been everywhere in Texas just wrestling, you know? So, it's like to me, it's cool, like, seeing, like, people recognizing that, you know? Because, like, because yeah. for the longest, we're kind of, like... Nobody really cared about us, you know. <laughs> we we're just, you know, kind of how you said earlier, like Texas is its own little country, you know. Mm. So it was kind of like that. It was like you can wrestle in Texas, but it's hard. hard it's hard to get out of Texas, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was a big thing for a while. So now it's pretty cool seeing a lot of people put their eyes on Texas and know that like Texas wrestling is great, you know. Yeah. Because like you said, we got companies like New Texas Pro, Reality Wrestling local wrestling mission pro you know vip wrestling we got a lot yeah. of promotions out here that are that are big and are bringing a lot of people in and we have a lot of talent here too as well you know we got a lot of we got a lot of uh good tag teams you know singles wrestlers you know women we got a lot of we got a, a great uh you know roster down here about women's wrestling yeah, uh, yeah. women can go down here man yeah, <laughs> that oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. we've spoken so, uh, to a few of them and uh 
you can really tell they're hungry for you know the chance to prove that Texas has some of the best wrestlers, male and female, in the country. Yeah. You know, yeah, they I really mean. do. Like, um, it wasn't until we started to look into New Texas Pro that we didn't we found out how big the scene actually is there. I think Texas's problem is it's so big, it almost gets lost a little bit at times. How you know, like you said, it's hard to get out of Texas. But once these guys and girls do get out of Texas everyone knows the name straight away you know no yeah i think that i think we're only just starting to see like a the, the start of like the indie wrestling being taken over by texas basically and i kind of <laughs> yeah, hope man. it does because like you said the, there's great talent all around and the thing is like wrestling i mean texas has been producing great talent for a while now it has, yeah. stone cold untaker yeah. shell michaels booker t uh man, there's I feel there's some of the biggest names. Yeah, you, you, yeah, man. Yeah. You can even go further back. I mean, like we look at the Von Erichs and people yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, yeah man. There's yeah, just, you I feel go like, right back. Yeah, man. I feel like people forget that, and I'm like, nah, man. We, Texas has has been holding down for a while, man. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I mean, want to that. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you as well. Obviously, you wrestled for New Texas Pro. And um, one of the guys that we're hearing a lot of things about at the minute from a lot of people, uh, the guy you worked with, uh, Mysterious Q. Well, mm. What's your thoughts on him at the moment? Oh, I love Mysterious Q, man, because uh, when I was starting off here at Reality Wrestling, uh, he was like the that guy, you know, he was a main yeah. event guy. Uh, and like, it was pretty cool, like kind of being a rookie and kind of looking up to him and be like, hey, man, like Mysterious Q, you know, like I can go. And he's just a monster, man. He's huge. He moves moves around like a you know like a like a cruiserweight for no reason. Yeah. I don't get it. He's a freak, <laughs> isn't like, he? What? Yeah, I don't yeah, get man. It. He's, yeah, he's so good. Uh, yeah, he can, like you said, he's strong, like deceptively strong. He's a big dude. Yes. He can fly. He's got charisma. Uh, he's got a cool as fuck mask. And <laughs> I, I feel like he's one of those guys that's gonna uh, really break out soon because he's actually. I think it's. 602 days it'll be now as new Texas yeah. Pro champion. Yeah, and, man. You know, whoever beats him is going to get a huge ovation because he's really carrying like new Texas right now. Uh, not no, no, for sure. New Texas, but oh, yeah, yeah. to show how like how good mysterious Q is, uh, do you reckon, you know, would you ever want to get the chance to maybe take it off his shoulders if you got it? So I, I wrestled them in Florida for for the uh, for the New Texas uh, championship, but unfortunately, you know, I didn't beat them. But I feel like if I get another chance, I I can definitely you know you know get that get that goal away from them, man. Yeah. Uh, but you know that's not really up to me. You know, I feel like that they're gonna be like, no, nah, you know, you had a chance already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, we got another guy down here that's that's pretty good as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, uh, Brian Keith. Brian Keith's yeah. phenomenal yeah. as well, man. He Brian Keith can the go. Hunter, is it? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both those, brilliant. yeah, and both of those guys come out of uh, Booker's man. Uh, those are two other Booker T guys that you know that are uh, like kind of homegrown talent from there. Yeah, and yeah. kind of yeah, especially for Brian, like Brian and I started together. Uh, oh. We used to we used to just go to Booker's show and like set up the ring, <laughs> and we, <laughs> we kept we kept showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up until we kind of got a chance to like get on the show, you know. Yeah, and like uh, like I said, that's what we do. We kind of we we'll pair deuce and kind of just show up set up the ring, show up, set up the ring until they were like, hey, kid, you want to get a match? I was like, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I have my gear. <laughs> uh, I just have happen to have my gear. Yeah, I just, yeah. just, just here. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, man, both those guys are great. And, uh, and I'm glad you guys know about them as well. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, man. Yeah, we, uh, we, 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 on this, Callum will tell you the same thing. Obviously, during the pandemic and stuff, we're, we're huge fans of the Indies anyway, but the, the US Indies have really been our lifeblood during the pandemic because we've not had anything over here for at least 14 months now. Um, so the US Indies have kept us going and we, we've really discovered so many companies and talents over there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure and we've been fortunate to get the, the, a lot of these people on to chat with us. Yeah, um, it's yeah, honestly it's been, very familiar. It's been great. Um, like, like Jamie said, during this downtime, uh, I, I love the independence anyway. I always have preferred the American independence to British wrestling. That's just, yeah. it's always been my like go to. Um, but I feel like during the pandemic, the American Indies have kind of like even stepped up another level, if that's even possible. It's like every company's tried the hardest to keep independent wrestling alive and going. And they've not only succeeded, but they've made it even better than it was before. 
And now you're seeing all these new promotions pop up, bigger shows, even better talent. And I think it's just testament to how strong the American independents are right now, like all across the country. And I can't wait for the borders to open up because that means some of you guys are going to come over here and that's going to be amazing. Yeah, man. And it's funny that you say that because I love the British wrestling more. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I love British wrestling, man. I love uh, I love guys like Pete Dunn. I love Pete Dunn, man. Yeah. Pete Dunn's like the, the greatest to me. I love watching him. I, I, used, to, I used to love watching him and uh, Tony Storm. Like, even before yeah, yeah. they kind of, like, started making it, I was, like, watching them already, like, yeah. way before they, they went to, like, WWE and whatnot. So it was pretty cool seeing a lot of those guys and kind of, like, I don't know, to me, I just... I, I love I love wrestling outside of the U.S. because I feel like I respect them more. Mm. <laughs> but that's yeah. just me, you know what I mean? Like in Mexico, Japan, you know, the U.K. I feel like you see wrestling over there, and they just respect it a lot more. You know, it's here it's kind of look. Yeah, it's a sport. Yeah, it, it's treated yeah, like a sport. Yeah, definitely. So I love watching. You know, like I said, I love watching wrestling uh, at other places because, like I said, it just it just kind of like that to me. Uh, but yeah, man, we're we're definitely uh, we're definitely you know. Uh, hold it down here in America <laughs> you know yeah. we're, we're definitely you know uh, kind of I guess we kind of had to take the ball and kind of you know run with it down here and kind of just do our own thing and I feel like a lot of people felt like we couldn't wrestle for a while so yeah. so I feel like out of that there, were, there something was born something was like okay we couldn't wrestle for a while so now we got to really you know kind of show out and kind of you know show our skills that's, that's how I felt about it you know I couldn't wrestle for about what, like five four months so yeah. In that whole in that whole little break, I know when I came back, I had to, you know, be better than that was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've kind of obviously I said we've been thankful for the US Indies. Um, we've just done nothing but watch out we can the US yeah. Indies and Dan and Danhausen have basically kept us safe. <laughs> so, do, you, do you love do you love that Danhausen? I do, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. Him. I've never found anyone that doesn't like Danhausen. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like, <laughs> Sorry, Gino. Sorry, Callum. Did you just say you wrestled Danhausen? I did. I did. What was I that wrestled. experience like? <laughs> it was funny because he did the little tequila dance. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so That's actually I, my ringtone. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I had, to, I had to, dude. I had to change it to that. I couldn't help myself. I, it's uh, funny, though, because uh, over here at the Hot Topic stores, uh, he has shirts now. He has shirts now as well. Yeah. And I, went, I went to the mall, like, last week, and I was trying to find a shirt. I was like, where's the shirt? And I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, but hopefully I can order it online soon. It, th- that guy is an absolute genius. Uh, like, he, we, we, we were saying it before to a guest, like, uh, I don't know, he could put his face on this mask. <laughs> and I'd buy it just because it's Danhausen, you know. It, 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 it's just such a marketable guy and an absolute genius. But um, do you reckon, uh, you know, if, do you reckon you'd make a good team, perhaps, you and Danhausen, or do you think you're better opponents? I think we would be better opponents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the thing is, like, when I wrestled them, it was, uh, I think it was like a triple threat, a four-way match. Yeah. So I feel like if we went one-on-one, it would be a lot more fun, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, he's he's very. Uh, I think he's one of those guys that kind of like makes the best of what he has, you know. And yep. he knows that he doesn't have to go all out with stuff, you know. Wrestling, you know, everybody thinks everybody just wants to be a, a badass wrestler, you know. what I mean, and the thing is, you know, even like you know, even like in WWE, everybody has their own little role, you know. What I mean, of, of what they do mm-hmm. and what works with them. And Don has, has found that of himself, and he yeah. he's doing great at it, you know. He, he's, he gets he's, the most out of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and then to me that's what it's all about to me wrestling yeah. is about doing less you know if you do yeah. less and you're successful you're killing them man but if you're out here you know doing the most it's, and it's then it's like, like yeah john cena yeah. for example you know yeah. he, he, everyone used to criticize him for having the five moves of doom or whatever or he'd never bump but i was like surely that makes him a, a very smart wrestler because <laughs> he's he's like the top drawer in the company he's taking a couple of bumps a match and he's got five moves that he does Surely that's the dream, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 But speaking of, as you mentioned, Dan Housen killing it, also killing it is yourself in MLW. Um, yeah, we're man. big fans of MLW. We spoke to Alicia at two uh, earlier this week. I saw that. Um, I saw that. Yeah. I even said to Alicia, I was like, we get an hour every week in the UK of MLW, and it's one of the best hours of wrestling yeah, you can really find. I mean, what's it like been for you um, being at MLW so far? 
I love I love MOW and like I'm like a little biased about it, but like I love it because it's like a it's another company that kind of focuses on wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. To me, you know what I mean? I feel like we take wrestling very, you know, very uh, we 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 res- we respect wrestling a lot, and we kind of just yeah. I feel like you can tell, you know what I mean? And just the whole like presentation of it, like the way we have our names up top with the little time, you know what I mean? That's my favorite uh, that's like, detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's so cool, you know? And to me, I, I love little stuff like that. That makes you kind of like really respect wrestling because I feel like sometimes wrestling is looked at as a joke, you know, from like mm. uh, like even WWE, you know, I don't know, don't mean to bash anybody, but like, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit of a joke sometimes. So, so to me, it's pretty no, cool that like, yeah, so to me, it's pretty cool that, like, you know, there's companies, you know, like MOW or Ring of Honor and all these other places that kind of respect wrestling and stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, man, I love MOW. We have a great roster, you know, we got Hammerstone there, we got Holiday, we got, uh, you know, the the Injustice, we got all these guys that can go, man, and, like, you see them, yeah. you know, in the U.S. Indies, you see them kind of being, being taken over everywhere. So it's pretty cool yep. seeing that and being part of that team. You know, we got our champion fought too. He, he's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. He was he, he was down here in Texas like two weeks ago. Yeah, and I just got to see him live again. Like, I didn't get to see him live like for a while, so I got to see him live again. And I was like, oh my god, this guy. This he's, a unit. he's a unit. He's a unit. Exactly. Yeah, man. You you don't expect that out of him. <laughs> but no, but that's yeah. another name as well. I mean, you said with the roster, um, because I've been sitting for a long time, like factions as well. I think Contra Unit's one of the best factions in all of wrestling. I think yeah. the Contra Unit are, are fantastic what they do. So there, there's another addition to the roster. But you mentioned Richard Holiday as well, because, I mean, we spoke to Holiday <laughs> a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, he was um, he was polite, but he made sure that we were very much aware that he's better than us kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> a bit of a dick if you ask me. But <laughs> Yeah. Uh, have you got your sights on taking that title off him? Uh, of course, man. I don't know if you guys got to see the last episode of his last season of Mother You. I took him out, bro. I took him out. You he did? Was out here get inter- yeah, he was getting interviewed by Alicia, and I just came up from behind, knocked him out, gave him a DT, told him I, because he, he, he says he fired me. I said I quit, you know what I mean? Because I really did quit. I didn't want to be a part of the dynasty, you know? I, they, all they were talking about was like, tanning and like coffee <laughs> yeah oh, dude, he, he made us wait while he made his coffee on the interview that's you know so i'm yeah. totally with you on that oh. yeah yeah and to me and to me i'm all about the mamacitas i don't care about the coffee <laughs> oh, i love it yeah love it you know they were they were talking about that's why that's why anymore. i wear chino medina guys right we the same, so. <laughs> there you go man so you guys let him know next time he's here that i quit Hey, I oh, yeah. it, you know? there isn't going to be a next time he said this is a one and done you're lucky that I'm even here this time so I think wow. that's our bridge band wow. with Richard Holiday yeah he's definitely a dick <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but no he, he legit he made us wait while he made his coffee in, in the background and yeah yeah he made sure we knew we were we were lower than him you know in the uh, so do, do us a favour yeah. Gino give him you know because yes. we're not we're not going to do it because we'd get our ass kicked but you you can do it Give him a good one for us, won't you? I got you, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give y'all a shout out. I'm gonna scream out y'all's name. But... This is Hell yeah, man. <laughs> That's what we want. That's what we want. <laughs> but, um, before we start to wrap up as well, Dukes, I know we always when we do a Zoom, we know we only get 40 minutes and we get terrified. Which that sucks gonna because I feel like we could get another half an hour out of this easily. But yeah. Zoom only ever gives us 40 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which first of all means, Gino, you know, that we're gonna have to bring you back at some point if you're cool with of that. Of course, of course. Um, but I did want to ask you before I wrap up, uh, you, you did compete at Impact against Eddie Edwards as well. Yes. Uh, yes. What, what was that like? Because, you know, you hear, again, Eddie Edwards is one of the best in the world. I mean, that must have been a yeah. great match for you. Yeah, man, it was one of those matches where, like, I got to test myself, you know, because, mm. like you say, he's one of the best in the world. So, like, I got in there and and I, I guess I was able to keep up with him and I beat him as well. So, Hell yeah. Um, so it was pretty cool, like, being able to do that. It, that show was kind of like a a reality of wrestling show, which is a Booker T's Raw show versus yeah. Impact versus Impact. So it was one of our guys versus their guys. And uh, yeah, we had one of those shows and it was pretty cool being able to represent a reality of wrestling and being able to represent Texas as well. And like just getting in there and like, you know, compete with a guy at his level because, you know, you don't get to as much. You, you didn't know? just compete though. You, you won. 
you beat the guy. <laughs> that's true. Level. That's true. I like I like you, man. You, you're cool. He's <laughs> 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 like, yeah, you didn't compete. You beat him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, uh, I, being able to do that was pretty fun because I grew up watching, you know, a lot of those guys on TV. You yeah. Know, yeah. Him seeing them when David Richards, you know, go go at it, you know, uh, at Impact. It was pretty cool growing up and seeing them and being able to wrestle. You know, uh, the guys like him, you know, guys that could still go in and are still, you know, killing that out there. Yeah. And uh, he was great, man. He, he had a great attitude. He was he was easy to work with and whatnot. And I learned a lot, a lot of them. Mm. You know, he he taught me a lot of little little stuff, you know, that people don't know. And uh, yeah, he's a he's a pretty cool guy, man. And uh, hopefully we can get the rematch soon, you know, just just because, you know, I'll give him another chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. You got you to give him a chance. But yeah, man, that's um, that's a match I would pay good money to see happen again. So fingers crossed it will. But um, before we let you go, do as well. Obviously, no, we are going to bring you back because, like Callum said, we could we could do another two, three parts with this man. There's so much to talk about. But before we uh, we do go, you want to let everyone know where they can find you, social media, any any merchandise to plug. Yeah, man, you guys can find me at TLHT, uh, which stands for the Latin Heartthrob. You can find me on there uh, on Twitter, you know, Instagram, and I believe Facebook as well. And uh, yeah, you can. I have a lot of merch the links on there as well on my bio. You guys can check my bio. You guys uh, can check me out at local wrestling. Oh, you guys yeah. can check me out at reality wrestling. You guys can check me out at New Texas. And of course, MLW. Well, we're going to be back soon. We're going to be back soon. We're, we're, You're uh, everywhere, we're, dude. Yeah, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I, lo- <laughs> I just, I love wrestling, man. So I just, every, as tell. much wrestling, as much yeah. wrestling I can get out, I'll, I'll, I'll be there, man. This- I always tell people. What was that? There's some guests that we have on and you can just tell <laughs> how much they love wrestling by when they're speaking. And you haven't stopped smiling throughout the whole thing while you're talking about wrestling. So it's really infectious when you get a guest who you clearly just has a passion for it. So thank you, man. Thank, work, man. thank you, man. I grew up on that, man. So there's nothing else I can do, man. I just, there's, I just love wrestling, man. I feel like Anywhere you can find the ring, you can find me around around there, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man. Yeah, hopefully you guys tune, tune in to MOW. Like I said, we're coming back soon. Uh, we're we're actually having a show down here in uh, Philadelphia, July 11th, I believe. So after that, I feel like more episodes will come out uh, out there. So yeah, you guys stay tuned for that, man. Hell yeah, man. That's what we want to hear. Like I said, we're big fans, man, of MOW. It's literally one of the best hours of wrestling that we got over here. Um, <laughs> so I can't wait for the return. But, dude, it's been an absolute pleasure. We can't thank you enough. I am literally going to go and buy that T-shirt when we come off this call. <laughs> he will as well. He always does. I will, That's why he I doesn't will. have any money. It's because he just buys <laughs> all of the guest merchandise. So. I'm, I, I am getting that T-shirt. But, Gino, it's been a pleasure, man. I can't thank you enough. Gino Medina. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. I'll be back soon.